Making your own compost is the best way to feed your garden, but it can also be painfully slow. So let's speed things up with some simple steps to make lots of compost fast. Composting's easy when you keep in mind the basics. Green materials, brown materials, air, and water. Get the balance of these four ingredients right and you'll dramatically shrink the time it takes to create beautifully crumbly, sweet smelling compost. And there are other steps besides. So here come my top tips to really power up your compost and do stick around to the end because we'll be making a new compost heap using pallets that you can get for free. First up, aim for the right mix of green materials to browns. We want roughly equal proportions. But what determines whether something is a green or a brown? Well, green materials tend to have a higher nitrogen content and will be sappier and fleshier in texture. Examples include grass clippings, spent crops and old bedding plants, weeds, make sure they're free of seeds so you don't spread them around, and then any kitchen scraps, those can go in as well. Not all green materials are obvious. Tea leaves and coffee grounds, those are actually greens despite being brown because they have quite a high nitrogen content. Similarly, look at these grass clippings. They're quite brown, but they still count as greens because all they've lost is moisture and the nitrogen content remains unaffected. And then we have our browns, which have a higher carbon content, making them drier, coarser materials. Examples include leaves, plenty of those right now, dried ones that have fallen from the trees, twiggy prunings, wood chippings, straw, and then anything made from plant materials, so scrunched up or shredded newspaper or torn up bits of cardboard. Whatever you add, try to keep the pieces as small as possible because smaller pieces will have a greater surface area that those composting organisms can get to work on. So chop up stems like this or you could shred woodier material. Not everyone has a shredder, I don't, but you may find that if you've got a powerful lawnmower, that'll be really good at chopping up non-woody materials such as corn stalks. Or you could just use your pruners or loppers or stab at material with a spade. Next, add a natural activator, which is anything that kickstarts or boosts your compost. I wouldn't bother with off-the-shelf products described as uh, compost makers or compost accelerators. They're a bit expensive and not really worth the investment. Instead, the very best activator is the manure of herbivorous animals, everything from chicken droppings to horse manure or your own liquid gold. Own up, who else pees in their compost heap? Come on, let me know down below. But look, if you're a bit squeamish about using either pea or manures, then see if you can get hold of some coffee grounds. Most coffee shops are only too happy to give them to you, as they are, after all, a waste product. If you're running short on browns, then try asking neighbours who keep guinea pigs, rabbits or small rodents. The straw or shavings, together with their pea and their poo, makes a really potent mix and will really help speed things up on the compost heap. What all of these natural activators have in common is that they have a very high nitrogen content, making them powerful accelerants, especially if your compost heap has lots of browns in it. Regularly mixing or turning your compost heap is a great way to get more oxygen in there to give it a new lease of life. Now it is hard work, but if you're after double quick compost, it's well worth the effort. You can do this at any time, but it makes sense to at least do it one or two weeks after you've finished filling it up. My compost heap is pretty full now, so let's get on and turn this lot. By doing this, all those beneficial bacteria will get a boost of oxygen. They'll in turn build up the heat in my heap as they get to work, which should slash weeks, perhaps even months off the time it takes to get my final beautiful crumbly compost. To cover or not to cover, that is the question. Well, as we head into winter, it's a good idea to cover open heaps like this one to both insulate it and stop it from getting too wet from those heavy winter rains. Insulating the heap keeps things active for longer as temperatures start to drop. You can use any type of sheeting or just several layers of cardboard like this should shed most of the rain. If you're going to use old carpet for this, just make sure it's one made from natural fibres such as jute or hemp, as you don't want any man-made materials ending up in your compost. 
Avoiding soggy compost made wet from either excessive rain or lots of green materials really is a must in our quest for quicker compost. If it gets too wet, it will get heavier and slump down, turning a heap into a putrid, smelly mess. Not nice. If it gets in this state, dig it all out and restack it again with more browns to help open it out a bit and keep it covered. In the same vein, if it gets a bit dry, then get in there with a watering can and give it a really thorough watering once or twice a week to re-wet it. How do you tell if it's wet enough? Well, get your hand in there and grab some of the material and give it a good squeeze. It should feel moist, but it shouldn't be so wet that drips come draining off it. Here's a heap that has been recently remixed and just look at the temperature it's reaching. That heat is just coming from the bacteria breaking down the material and it speeds up the whole process of decomposition to make better compost faster. When building up a heap, we want to add the ingredients in a way that keeps everything lightly moist and full of air. That will keep the organisms that help with decomposition happy and thriving. This heap now is going to mature, so let's start a new one so I can show you how to add all the ingredients. But before we do that, please take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can see how the final compost turns out. Oh, and do drop this video a like as well. There's no time like the present to start a new heap. I'm starting my new heap here on this cleared area of ground. It's going to sit directly on the soil, which will make it easier for all of those wondrous worms and beneficial bacteria to find their way in. And that will kickstart the composting process a little bit sooner. Now, it doesn't matter if you can't locate it directly onto soil, the worms will still find their way in. They always do somehow. And you can always introduce some soil or some mature compost from an existing heap into your new one to introduce all of those beneficial microorganisms. I'm adding walls to my uh, compost heap using these three salvage pallets, which I'm joining together with this thick gauge wire. You could add a front to the heap as well. And if you'd like to see how to make a really sturdy compost heap using pallets, then do check out our video on that. And I will pop a link to that down below. I'm hammering in this rebar here just to kind of pinch the wood into position so it doesn't get shaky. Now, I produce quite a lot of compostable material. If you don't, then of course a smaller, standard-made compost bin will work just fine and is probably a lot neater too. The advantage of a larger heap comes as we head into winter and things start to cool off. A larger heap has more outside layers, if you like, keeping the inside well insulated and warmer so that it carries on remaining active for longer into winter. And now to start filling the heap. First of all, I'm adding in some more open twiggy brown material. That'll keep the bottom nice and aerated so there's plenty of oxygen down there. And now in with some greens. As I said, we want to be adding our greens and browns in roughly equal proportions. Now, I wouldn't obsess about this. The important thing is just to avoid water-heavy greens, such as lots of grass clippings, because they will slump down with the weight, creating an airless and really soggy mass, and we really don't want that. So by adding in the browns, we can balance out all of those greens and keep everything nice and open, and all of the beneficial organisms that help with composting really happy and fine and dandy. Finding enough browns at the height of the growing season can be tricky, but I find that having plain cardboard to hand or scrunched up paper just helps all those green materials from matting together into a slimy goo. Now follow these steps to speedy compost and you could be cooking up your compost during the growing season within three months. Now that is fast. You've got to love beautifully crumbly compost made fast and fresh. It has a really lovely earthy, almost sweet smell, just delicious. What plant isn't gonna love this? If you want to dig deeper into this topic, then this composting playlist is tailor-made for you with more ideas to turbocharge your heap and some clever ways to use the end result. I'll catch you next time.